we're gonna go through a little walking demo here with this video. So again, remember he can't go ahead of you. Oh, his position looks great. His body language looks good. Sniffing is fine, he just can't stop and sniff. So I wouldn't have corrected there. His arm is nice and relaxed. His body language looks great. Now he's starting to drift a little ahead. There you go. Now my leash is really thick because, like I said, I work with dogs that like to chew their way from freedom. <laughs> um, but if uh, when you get one, you you want to have to get one as thick and, it, and you can wrap it around your hand. Okay. So if he starts getting in front of you or two behind you, that was great correction. Then I take I choke up and take away some of the leash. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk to the stop sign. We're going to cross the street. I'm guessing that post right there is something he would like to uh, mark, like right there. Yeah. Okay. So. I also, one of the things I do is I make the dog sit before I go into the street. Boom, great. Sit. Pop it again. Sit. There you go, now go ahead. And you could have rewarded there. Okay. Oh, let's go this way. Now, I always turn a circle away from the dog. Always keep the dog in your outside. Okay. Just to be better, more control. Now walk, get him close to this. There you go. I want to give him opportunity to pee or to mark things and just not allow it. Now he's starting to drift a little ahead. There you go. Pop it. That was not enough. Okay. And that was uh, a more of a pull. It wasn't fast enough. It wasn't intense enough. Okay. So a little fat. He's a little ahead of you, and you are a fast walker. There you go. How does this compare to what you had before? I walk real close to this, give him an opportunity to pee on it, just don't let him. Excellent, that was great. All right, so we're just getting the shade up here. Let's go stand on the side and we're gonna put him in a sit. How does this compare to the problem that you were using? You feel you have the same um, control? Yeah, I do, and okay. I think uh, Much help. I, I feel better about it. Absolutely. Yeah. See, it's a psychological problem. Now, one of the other things that we do, you're a very fast walker. Uh, that's great, and you're a runner too. Um, but when you're walking, every once in a while, I stop, and I would make it maybe make it a habit to stop in between each hop and put him back to sit. Sit. Now, then he came to you, or you came to him. Okay. Sit. Should I try to get him up? Yeah. Sit. Jack's up. Right here. Make a kiss. Right here. Sit. Yes. I mean, his. His desire to listen to you fluctuates quite yes. a bit. That's why the petting with a purpose will really help. That's why, because outside now we hear distractions. There's dogs, there's this guy rattling stuff, starting yeah. the lawnmowers. Yeah. So all those things are stimulating for him. So what I would do is as you're going between each house, somewhere between each driveway, I would stop and do a sit. Okay. It gives you practice at doing that and then rewarding him for doing it. It gets you in a habit of doing that, but it also helps him start to mind you a little bit better. And I stop suddenly, okay. so that he just, all of a sudden, you stop and then you sit. Okay. When it gets to the point where you stop, he just sits automatically without you having to tell him to sit. Okay. Then we know he's paying attention to you. Now, some of the tricks that I use is I will scuff my foot as I, one hit, when he gets out of the position, I scuff my foot on the next step. That helps him, he looks over to it, okay. and that causes him to, again, okay. refocus on you, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's not a bad dog, but I definitely see, there's definitely a lot of warning signs, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm most concerned probably by his electivity of thinking that he can listen to you when he wants. Yeah. So again, I don't want to push too far in this particular session because I think we probably going to need it in this yeah. session. But what I'd like you guys to do is really focus on the petting with the purpose, okay. walking in this more structured way without that. And seriously, just by removing the, the prong collar, He's going to feel better about it, and you're psychologically, you feel better, and you have the same control. So let's just, you know, it's that old adage, why use a hammer when a feather will suffice? Yeah. So, um, and again, we want to try to increase his exercise because that will also have a contributing factor. You're, you look like you're in much better shape than I am. Get some roller blades. I'm telling you, you will have, have, you will have, a, you have an excuse to buy your roller blades. But you'll have a lot of fun with it, and he'll feel good you about it. Have rollerbladed before? Yeah, I used to all the time. And, and people, and I'm going to do it like I said, Tara's going to remind me of what we're going to do in class, but I've had people like, you're, they don't tear you down. I've only fallen once. It was actually because of her dog, but it wasn't her dog. It was because we hit a pothole. Oh. And that was the only reason. <laughs> but besides that, I've had like great Danes that are lunging this way, uh -huh. and I'm able to continue going the direction I want. Is that something that you would use the 
vest with too. Yes, yeah, you want to use a harness for that. You don't okay. want to use a collar. Or like the damaged. weighted vest also? Uh, no, I wouldn't use a weighted vest for that. Because that would want him just to be able to just burn as much energy. But, it's already full in use. Yeah. True. And it's, it's, because it, it adds a little... Fish. Um, so, carrying the vest, the weighted vest, and then pulling are two different jobs. And if you try to overload him with too, too many much. things, he's going to try to concentrate on, well, they want me to carry his backpack, but they also want me to pull. And I don't know which one is more important. Okay. So, yeah, we just won when he's on the on the harness. The harness means you can run, and I, you can and you want to let him. The first time you do it, let him run as much as he wants. Keep going until he kind of stops and starts trotting. Then I would turn around, come home, and keep okay. note of how long that was. So in the future, that's kind of the route that you take. Okay. All right, you did very good, buddy.